from the crown, where everybody seems to be wearing a barber, to the, the Rogue Territory supply jacket being seen on everybody else that's ever been on the screen ever. The wax jacket seems to be the trend in movies and TV these days. But when it comes to battling zombies in The Last of Us, Pedro Pascal ditches the usual suspects for the flint and tinder waxed flannel lined trucker jacket. But what makes this jacket just so damn good for, for battling those zombies? Actually, okay, we're gonna we're gonna dive into that at the at the end of the video. For now, let's let's break this down. Uh, we're we're gonna look at what exactly this jacket is. Then we're gonna look at what exactly it's made of. Then we're gonna look at the fit. Then we're gonna look at that controversial lining and why it's controversial. Then talk about the things I like, the things I don't like. Then maybe some alternatives. Then maybe the zombies. Right? What exactly is? this jacket. Here is just a quick rundown of the specifics. Made entirely in the USA, so that's all the materials that go into it, and cut and sewn over in Los Angeles, I believe. Made from a waxed 7 ounce Martexan fabric from New Jersey. The body and the sleeves are lined in a super soft flannel. It's got hand warmer pockets, it's got that single chest pocket, it has one pocket on the inside, and it costs $298. The name kind of says it all. It is a waxed trucker style jacket with a flannel lining from the brand Flint and Tinder. The trucker part might come from the fact it bears a passing resemblance to the Levi's Type 1, but actually, honestly, the, the, the single chest pocket is the, the only passing resemblance. It's a much better jacket for, for today. The fit is way better, it's less boxy. It has hand warmer pockets, it's wind and water resistant, to a degree and is lined. Details. As I mentioned, the fabric is a 7 ounce Martexan wax cotton in an Oxford cloth twill. You know your Oxford cloth button down shirt? This is the same thing. It's just beefier and it's waxed. The Martexan fabric that's been reactive dyed and that means that the, the dye stuff it penetrates the deepest into the yarn possible. It penetrates all the way through. And that just means that you're going to get a deep even tone of whatever colour you might be going for along with the fact you're not going to get any bleeding, so it's not going to run in the wash, although you shouldn't wash it, and you're not going to get any crocking, so it's not going to turn your grandmother's white sofa, whatever colour it might be. As for the wax part, the fabric has actually been industrially waxed post-weaving process. So this isn't your, your home job where you're sitting there with a block of foul raven wax and a heat gun. This has actually been through a process in which the fabric is put through rollers and the wax is squeezed under pressure and heat right into the core of the yarn. This is just simply the, the best way to make a wax cotton fabric. It's, it's the way that the big boys do it, the barbers, the bell staffs, the filsons. And actually I believe that this Martexan fabric might be seen in some of those brands mentioned, but don't quote me on that. And also this is why you should not wash this jacket, not at all. Uh, if you wash the jacket, it's going to remove some of that wax, which is just going to make it a jacket which is not going to be windproof or waterproof. Water resistant, sorry. I have to, I have to be precise here. So, the Oxford cloth sailcloth, it starts off at 7 ounces, and then with the waxing process it ends up at 9.5 or something like this. Given that that waxing process adds that little bit of weight to the fabric and that little bit of, of heft, of stiffness, it comes out being, for me, the, the perfect weight of a wax cotton, especially if you're using it for a jacket. Now, it doesn't have that initial stiffness that I associate with the likes of the Filson tin cloth, and it also doesn't have that sort of mildly flammable smell that I find comes along with barbers. What else is there to say about the fabric? Uh, it comes in a whole bunch of colours, like a whole bunch of them. This one here. I probably should have showed you before now that I had the jacket, but anyway, this one here is the coal color. I guess the, the tan color is the, the most popular one. It's certainly the one that I came across first when I saw this picture, which has been everywhere for years, and it's actually the picture that I think put the, the Flint and Tinder wax jackets on the map. I, I think one of the things that, that people love about wax cotton is its ability to, to age and wear it with you, much like your denims. It picks up a patina with all of the dirt and grime, whatever you just pick up from day-to-day -day life. I like the look of it. I like the aesthetic. It's just not for me. I need to have something that's not going to show the dirt, and um, this is that. But how does this um, hold up in the rain? I, I mean, I wore it out in a pretty, I wouldn't say torrential downpour, but a downpour the other day. 
and it held up very well. I stayed, I stayed dry underneath. Now I'm not going to get into the shower to test it, but what I will do, what I will do, back in a second. And I need another camera for this. Another camera with a battery would be good. Water. And we're going to come back to that at the end of the video. I mean, in a real downpour, yes, the water is going to going to creep in, especially like around about the shoulder seams. I mean, sewing this thing together, it, it pulls, puts holes in it. And I think that the, I, I, I can't imagine that the threads that it's been sewn together with, I can't imagine they're waxed. So I, I, I think this acts as kind of like a, creates a little bit of a wicking effect. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could you could wax those threads yourself, but uh, honestly, who's got the time? After a few years, yeah, you're gonna have to re-wax the jacket. This isn't as much of a pain in the ass as it sounds, honestly, and Huckberry does have the right stuff for the job. Uh, you also, you'll need a heat gun. I don't think they have that. So that's the that's the outer fabric. Uh, we're gonna get to the, the lining in a minute because that's a, a whole thing. What's next? Uh, the buttons, they are, they are very good quality, they're very well set, they're branded with flint and tinder, and they're in this kind of gunmetal color. As I mentioned briefly earlier, there's the hand warmer pockets, which is uh, pretty much essential for me these days. Then there's this single chest pocket with the flat closure, which I, I've ended up quite often putting my keys and my glasses in here. Uh, more my keys, because I found that the back of the button that would scratch up the lenses from my glasses, but still, I find it useful. Then there's an internal pocket, which is actually down below, closer to the waistband. Uh, they call it a media pocket, so I presume it's for your mobile phone. And now, since we are on the inside, let's, let's talk about that lining. First off, it is simply essential that a waxed cotton jacket has a lining. <laughs> waxed cotton, the fabric is just it's not all that cozy. It's, it's actually downright uncomfortable to have it directly against the skin. Having a lining just means that it's, it's a wearable garment if you just want to throw it over a t-shirt. But anyway, it looks nice, right? It also feels very, very nice. It's got that old school blanket line trucker vibe to it. The thing is, it's 100% polyester, a man-made fabric but I guess all fabrics are man-made. So 100% synthetic fiber, which is in this rugged style, manly man world that we seem to inhabit, that's a big no-no, which I do get, I do understand this. If you're paying $500 for a jacket, I would expect that to be wool lined or at the very least lined with a good quality cotton twill. The thing is, this isn't $500, it's $298. I mean, to be keeping that, that low low price while still making the jacket and all the materials that go into the jacket in the US, I guess some, some corners or at least some perceived corners do need to be cut. Honestly, I don't think that this makes too much of a difference outside of this rugged, style perception. Certainly I can't speak to the long-term durability of this 100% polyester lining. I mean, I've had the thing for a week, but for, for my use case, and I'm guessing for most of your use cases, this is a perfectly acceptable fabric to be used as the lining of this jacket. The essential thing is that they have sourced a very, very good wax cotton for the outer of the jacket. And they have made that jacket very, very well. And that takes us nicely onto the construction. As I mentioned previously, this thing is totally sourced and sewn together in the US, in Los Angeles specifically. And in my research for this video, I didn't find any complaints about sort of the long-term durability or long-term quality issues with this jacket. Now, to the fit. And this is where the flint and tinder, wax, trucker, flannel line, whatever, this is where it completely kicks the ass of Barber or of, of Filson, and it sits very well alongside the likes of the Rogue Territory Supply Jacket. The fit is just 100% on point. It's modern, it's contemporary, and it works extremely well with how people wear their garments these days. It's not boxy, it's not baggy, but it's got good length in the body and the arms. It has got plenty of room if you need to put a sweater or a hoodie underneath, but it looks equally as good if you just want to wear a t-shirt. How's the water test getting on? Looks good, it's just sitting there. Sizing, right, I am a solid large in mostly everything, so that's like of likes of Levi's or Edwin or uh, whatever else. And this is a size large, so I would say go true to size. Okay, so that's the fabric, the fit, and the details. 
Let's move on to what I really like about the jacket and a couple of things I don't like. I like, or actually I love the fit. I think the fit is absolutely spot on. I also like the fact that it is sourced, cut and sewn in the US. Now, I'm not one of these guys that is all about the only made in Japan or only made in the US, not, not at all. But I do like that there are brands like Flint and Tinder, Hugbury, that are keeping these little pockets of made in the US alive. I think that's super important. And I also think that this is a longer discussion for another time. What else? I, I like the price. I find that very accessible and very fair. And the outer fabric, I think this is a very, very good wax cotton fabric. It's the perfect weight, perfect bulk, and it really seems to keep the water out. Okay, what I don't like, and this is a couple of very specific, very fussy things just for me. You might be very different. The hand warmer pockets, they are, they're unlined. So it's just skin against wax canvas, which is not at all cozy. I'd have really liked it if they had lined it with maybe the fabric that they used in the lining. Even, even like a, a cotton twill would have been better. And then there's the interior pocket. Now I love that there is an interior pocket and I love the placement, but I'd have just liked it to have been a little bit maybe not, not less deep, but like a little bit wider. It is great for fitting your mobile phone in, it's accessible. But if I want to keep my wallet safe for whatever reason, I it does fit in, but I find it very difficult to get out easily just because it's, it's a deeper pocket. I'm just actually realizing these are very specific use case scenarios and you guys might be very different, but just my thoughts. In conclusion, this is an amazing wax cotton jacket. It really is, I'm, I'm impressed and I'm surprised. And for the price, I don't think you can do much better. Who's it for? Um, anybody who's in the market for a good quality wax cotton jacket or a good quality jacket that's gonna look good and keep the worst of the weather off. And when's it for? Um, okay, for, for where I live, so like that's Northern Europe, Berlin, that is gonna be early to mid spring, then mid to late autumn. It would be too cold for the winter months and too warm for the summer months. Some alternatives might be the, let's see, the Barber Ashbury, that's Barber's more contemporary fitting jacket. You could also look at the Filson tin cloth, the issue I have with that, it's a very old school boxy fit. Uh, then of course there's the Rogue Territory Supply Jacket, which I guess is the, is the closest equivalent to, to, to this, but more, more costly. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, Free Note Cloth have a really, really beautiful wax cotton jacket um, with the, the linings are stunning. But yeah, again, you're paying a lot more for this. And right, I almost forgot the ridiculous premise of this video, uh, why this is the, the best choice for, for fighting off the zombie hordes. Um, well, okay, let's, let's break this down. In The Last of Us, I think that takes place 20 years after the zombies took over. So you're gonna want a garment that's gonna last and wax cotton is a notoriously tough fabric. So yeah, is it gonna last two decades? I don't know, but it's certainly gonna do better than the likes of uh, a Gore-Tex shell. It's also water and weather resistant. Apparently very water resistant. Apparently when you're battling the, the zombie hordes, you, you spend a lot of time outdoors, at least The Walking Dead and The Last of Us have taught me that which seems quite counterproductive surviving, but anyway, yeah, you spend a lot of time outdoors and yeah, keeping the, the wind and the rain off is, is a good thing. I'd also imagine that it would be, it would do a decent job at keeping the blood and the ooze that are normally associated with zombies. I imagine that would come off reasonably easy, but uh, uh, the zombies in The Last of Us look quite, they're more dusty than oozy. And yeah, the fit. You're gonna want something you can layer up and layer down through the seasons as you try not to be eaten. And yeah, you can do that with this. And it's also roomy enough that you can quite easily swing a machete. So yeah, it's a good choice for the zombie apocalypse. Not that it would ever be a problem for me because I would honestly be one of the first ones to turn into a zombie. Okay, can somebody please answer me this in the whole sort of zombie universe? The first thing that you should do in a zombie apocalypse is go straight to a motorbike store and get a full head to toe leather outfit. I don't care how hungry they are, they're not chewing through a leather suit. But that aside, um, what else do you need for a zombie apocalypse? I, a good pair of jeans. And I suggest you, you start off your, your search for a good pair of jeans right here.